do you think when we use animals, we violate their rights? Like violate their um, interest in living and right to be respected and that type of thing? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone! So it's been a while since I've shared my street interviews. This isn't because I've stopped doing them, it's because I've started to center my animal advocacy around other animals. The main way I do this is by collecting footage at a local sanctuary, a Friend Farm Animal Rescue, so be sure to check out their link in the description below. And I've found that showing other animals as individuals who experience life is a highly effective way to get the message out. Now the reason I decided to share these chats is because I've pretty much revolutionized the way I do my outreach. For the first year or so, my um, background was largely focused on a book I read about how to approach people from a psychology perspective, and also from information I collected on the internet and from watching YouTube videos. That all changed about a year ago when I read uh, Tom Reagan's Case for Animal Rights. So this is a pretty in-depth philosophical text, so I'm not going to get into the um, nuts and bolts of that here. What I am going to say is that my advocacy has centered now around the philosophy of animal rights. Now this isn't just some romantic appeal to the past or just because I think it's the right thing to do. I've also found a rights-based approach is more effective. I think this is largely due because of the simple and objective nature of this approach. But don't take my word for it. I'll let you watch to decide for yourself. Now this was a Cube of Truth demonstration organized by Anonymous for the Voiceless, and they graciously allowed me to play my rights-based outreach footage. This footage goes through a number of different species, both land and sea animals, and shows two sides to both species, both how they demonstrate that they're individuals and how their rights are violated. If you're interested in seeing or even using that footage, check out veganinteractions.com under Advocacy Resources. So I've uploaded two versions, um, a shorter highlight version as well as the longer version including the full day's worth of chats that is about an hour. Um, and the goal of the highlight version is to carve out the bits that are specifically uh, relate to um, a rights-based line of questioning. I'll also debrief and share any additional thoughts at the end of this video. With that, let's get into it. What do you think? Is, do you think when we use animals we violate the rights? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And do you think when we use animals, we violate their rights? I do, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big. I'm, I'm afraid of animals. I'm scared uh -huh. of animals. But my daughter is a massive animal lover. But I'm slowly getting round to, to the realization that they have feelings, and they, that yeah. you know, I'm realizing that because I've just read a book called Sapiens, and I don't know if you know of the. I book. don't, but that sounds interesting. Yeah. And it's about um, our ancestors being the, the chimpanzee. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of, oh, right, okay, yeah, I'm right, there are right. cousins, and, and it's kind of give me a new way of looking at animals. I like so, that, so new Lois, way of looking um, at animals, you know, yeah. That, that's, that's what I'm learning, and Lois has always loved animals, and she's just brilliant. Oh, and you're the future, aren't you? And so future, good on you for so, inspiring others. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think when we uh, use animals like this, we violate their rights? I'm not... I grew up in countryside and actually my father was a farmer. Okay. So I I'm not uh, I don't consider that animals should have the same equivalent rights as humans. But uh -huh. I understand it's a it's a question of value, so I, I yeah. understand you might think differently. But my my understanding is that we are not equal. But I think we are not treating them fairly, and I, uh, if I had to kill every animal I eat, obviously I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But, I mean, in wildlife, they get killed also by other animals. So, uh, if, I think there is a possibility to be able to kill them. But in our society today, I agree with you that it's not the right way, and that yeah. should change. Then, if we should all go vegan, I'm not sure, but I think you are uh, you are fighting a right fight, and I encourage you to to go ahead and continue because this type of footage is uh, is more people should see them. Yeah. What do you think about like basic moral rights? Like obviously we're not trying to get cows the right to vote or the right to drive a car or anything yeah. like that. Like just literally the right, just not to be res uh, to be respected and not be needlessly bred and killed. I mean, do you think from that perspective, do you think? Yeah, 
I, I understand what you mean, but um, basically, animals, if they live in wildlife, I, uh, human rights or the right, even the right to live, I think is a, is a human conception. And uh, I don't think it's applicable directly to, to animals. Uh, if they are just free to roam in the wild, they won't have more, they, have, they may have uh, a worse life than uh, in a good form, mm. even if they are slaughtered at the end. But, uh, if, you, if, if you're, yeah, and that, that's an interesting question. If you're an animal, would you rather be free and wild, or would you rather be used as a commodity and, you know, ultimately killed at the end? So, uh, you're right. It's a difficult yeah. question. I'm not sure they have the um, sufficient knowledge to know if they are free or not. Being able yeah. to be, uh, not knowing what they're missing, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But. Okay. Yeah, anyway. seriously. Like, yeah, can I give you a card? Yeah, it's got some uh, free resources on it. Because I, I can tell you're, you know, contemplative guy, and you're thinking about it. So that's <laughs> that's stuff one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the chat. Because that's the thing, I guess. If um, we wouldn't want, you know, dogs and cats on the screen, you know, really, what's the difference? And are we still violating their rights? You know, that's the. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now you made me feel guilty. <laughs> I've been there too, and it's it, it's the the beautiful yeah. thing about it is that guilt can be turned into a sense of liberation. When you you know it's up to us whether we want to support this. So yeah. What was your name? Leah. Leah. I'm Jeremy. It's lovely chatting with you. Thank you. Have a nice uh, rest of the weekend. Thank Enjoy you. the sun. See you later. Thanks for that. Cheers. As you could see, after I established a baseline with that uh, have you considered veganism question, my go-to rights-based question at the moment is, do you think when we use other animals we violate their rights? I think these chats demonstrate that there's an overwhelmingly positive response to this, this line of questioning. And even if someone doesn't agree, it brings the focus of the conversation to where it should be, the rights of other animals. Now a few quick notes, the conversation with the individual from uh, France, the opportunity to discuss the right to life came up and I found this to be a potential trap uh, when discussing rights because the um, potential iteration from that is saying that well farmers are, are granting animals life and, and, and they're aligned with that. So I prefer to focus on the right to be respected and to not be needlessly bred and killed. Another possible variation that didn't come up in these particular chats is when someone says animals don't have rights. The way I like to respond to that is ask if they think human animals have rights. I then explore this with them further to help demonstrate that we all have the same valid claim to basic moral rights. I do this by talking about how we all experience life through various emotions, and this gives us certain interests that are protected by our rights. This also helps to demonstrate that animal rights isn't opposed to human rights, it's actually an extension of it. Warning, we're about to go deep. Now when it comes to rights, there's two important distinctions. First is the source of the right. There's moral rights, which require a valid moral claim, and these aren't granted, we have them from birth. And then there's legal rights that are granted by the government through a legislative process. The second distinction to make is the type of duty associated with the right. The first is negative rights, which basically means non-intervention, or in simple terms, leaving someone alone. A positive right means the other person has a duty to do something for you, such as provide an education. So when we're talking to others about animal rights, it's important to clarify that we're not seeking the same rights as human animals. We're seeking moral negative rights, which means we're all born with a valid moral claim to not be used by others. You'll also notice I avoid certain language, such as talking about abuse, cruelty, or suffering. That's because these are subjective terms and opens the door to talk about how animals are used rather than ending their use altogether. People will often look for the right way to do the wrong thing. That's why I think it's important that we close this door. After all, it doesn't matter if we remove the suffering, the animal's rights are still being violated when we use them. If you're interested in more about language and how to approach conversations, be sure to check out the advocacy resources section of veganinteractions.com where I've updated the discussion guide and the language document to take a rights-based approach. I can't express how important this discussion is. Between national organizations pushing for reducitarianism or conditions-based campaigns to so-called abolitionist organizations that rarely discuss rights, it's important that we all as individuals do what we can to bring animal rights back to the animal rights movement. So what do you think? Do you think the vegan movement would benefit from more of a focus on rights? And if you're already incorporating a rights-based line of questioning into your animal advocacy, are there any other strategies that you use or favorite questions? Let us know in the comments. 
I do read all the comments and it really helps to charge me up. And I'm always looking for ways I can improve my animal advocacy work. So constructive feedback is more than welcome. I've got some exciting content in the pipeline, including a showdown with uh, local security staff at an uh, event while doing outreach. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're not already following my Facebook page, be sure to get that a like, as that's where I'm really focusing my content as I get a lot more reach there. And thank you for all you do for other animals. I'll see you in the next video. And if you're already incorporating... <laughs>